Hi, this is Renee Milton again. Welcome to The Changing Room. So today, uh, this is another part in the series, Characteristics of Cultic Groups. So today we're gonna to talk about on this long list that Michael Langone has of characteristic of cultic groups, um, points six and seven. So point six is this, the group has a polarized us versus them mentality, which can cause conflict with the wider society. So many times in these groups, you are so isolated uh, from the rest of society that your beliefs start to conflict with your job. They conflict with relatives, family members. These are situations that are very difficult to navigate and if you have this us versus them mentality, they don't understand, uh, they don't have the truth and that's why they're against you. If you don't have that initially by the time they are finished with you or by the time you are in that group a long time, you will. And it's something that slowly creeps up on you. You don't initially feel separated from your family members, your cousins, your mother, your father, your brother, sister, but after a while, because your beliefs are so different from theirs, it becomes an us versus them mentality. And it's difficult in the Christian uh, realm to navigate this because there are scriptures where Jesus talks about, hey, you might have a separation between you and your family following me. Um, those types of thoughts, those, it's not the exact scripture, but those types of thoughts are many times overly promoted. And so it becomes difficult to mix with people that are outside of the group. For me, all of my friends and associations were within the group. I didn't intend for it to be that way. But what happens after a while, they make you so uh, afraid of developing close relationships with people that are outside of the group that you end up not doing it out of fear. They do a lot of, uh, they did in our group, a lot of fear mongering. Um, even if you started going out to lunch with a group of people that were not saved, then it was seen as something that you really should be careful about because you know either they will draw you to to their way of life or you're drawing them if, if you're not drawing them to the truth then be very very careful they will draw you back out into the world so there was no middle ground there were no um people that were either unsaved or not a part of the group, they might be saved, but they're not part of us, that where the person was just a nice person. They were just, they didn't want anything from you. They weren't trying to uh, let the devil use them to draw you away. They just were a person, a nice person. And maybe you had some common interests. No, um, don't do that too often. Don't go out to lunch with this person too often. Uh, be careful. Wouldn't you like to go to one of our uh, gatherings and groups and, and stay active with that? So there was this creeping feeling of us versus them. Uh, I've heard of even in some groups, you can smoke, drink, <laughs> play sports or whatever within the group but you can't do these things with people outside of the group. So that's that's really something to try and wrap your head around. Um, but with us, it, it was just more of a thing that wasn't taught so much, or sometimes it was, 
to love not the world and neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So getting too close to the world or people in the world was seen as a negative. It was seen as a thing that um, something is wrong. Why, why do they feel so comfortable around you? In fact, people would brag how their friends didn't feel comfortable around them. They won't curse around me. You know, these, these types, types of things that made people feel special, like they had some type of special power with God that these people would not do any sins around them. It was an effort to make you feel uh, different from the wider society around you. Um, then there was this issue, of course, of divine healing. So our group, and this is a uh, long and involved story, did not believe in taking medications and accepting help from doctors and this type of thing. Uh, not so much now as they did when I first joined in 1982. But unfortunately, um, there was an us versus them mentality with that. The world don't understand divine healing. <laughs> so this is what they would say. So unfortunately, uh, people passed away um, feeling like they had to not accept any kind of help from a doctor any kind of help from medication, any kind of assistance. And I'm talking about with childbirth, with cancer, with very difficult colon cancer, ovarian, whatever, uh, breast cancer. They did not believe in seeking medical assistance. Although many of them did, they would go just to verify what was wrong. As a minister, um, and even when I wasn't, we, you know, we were required to help with the sick and I was very um, diligent in helping with sick people from the time I came there. Uh, and there were people that I sat next to that said, this, this is what we're supposed to do, right? So, and, and even then I, I would not know what to say to them because it doesn't sound like you're sure that you want to do this. You're just doing this because you feel this organization expects you not to accept medical help. It was put on the level of your relationship with God. So it was put on the level of if you come to something serious like a, a cancer or lupus, some serious illness, and you cannot trust God for that, then somewhere in your religious experience, something is wrong because God would not lead you up to this point and you don't have faith. So somewhere back there, you were disobeying God. Now this is this is heavy stuff because you're talking about people's life. You're talking about their family losing them and all of these things. So this really goes to the next two points. The leader is not accountable to any authorities. And the group teaches or implies that it is supposedly exalted ends justify the means. And this may result in members participating in behaviors and activities that may be unethical, like lying to family members or collecting money or bogus charities. Things that they would not normally do, but they do because the group has told me that this is how I should handle it. So I'm using the thing of divine healing because there are many times 
that I had heard uh, said over everybody. And when you get sick, don't tell them that the church put you up to it because we don't want to be liable for that. Tell them it was your idea that you want to trust God. Always put it on yourself. This is what we were taught. And because the organization takes on this, this lofty, um, go, lofty um, position in your life where it's more important to support the organization than really do what God says. Because if God told you, no, go ahead and take that medication, go ahead and take that operation, the immediate thought is, well, what does the church say? Or what is the church going to think about me? Or am I free to do that because everybody will think that I don't trust God? This is very serious um, stuff. So, so these three points, the group has a us versus them mentality. Uh, the leader is not accountable to any authority. And the group teaches or implies that the ends justify um, whatever means are necessary. So if you have to sacrifice your body so that divine healing and the idea of divine healing can remain in the camp of the saints, can, can still go on, then that's okay. I know you're in the ground, but that's okay. Um, and after a while, what they would do is they would say, well, we were praying for sister so-and-so to get up. She passed away this morning, but God did heal her. He did. He, he took her to heaven. She's in no more pain. She's with the Lord right now and she's rejoicing. But that's not what we were praying for, right? I mean, we were praying for her to be here, not God take her to heaven and that's how he healed her. <laughs> we were praying for her to be here, sitting next to us. And that's not what happened. And this would happen over and over and over again. Now, I, that is not to say, and I'm going to tell the other side, that is not to say that sometimes there were miracles. Sometimes there were people that were sick and they were healed. I even experienced a headache getting taken away instantly after I had prayer. I, I experienced that. But many of the cases did not come out the way we prayed. What was so irresponsible about, about that, and, and this is what I'm talking about, they were accountable to nobody, the leaders. <laughs> what was so irresponsible about that is that many of these leaders knew that there were pastors that had had operations. But they left the congregation feeling like, Everybody that's a good saint doesn't take any medication, doesn't accept any medical help. Many times you had people that were so sick and in so much pain, they would ask for medication before they died. So if you could have taken the medication and, and you're still in heaven and you're still okay two weeks before your death, why couldn't you have you've taken it six months ago and still been okay? Still been accepted as a good saint? Um, it made no sense. And the, as a leader, it, was, it became just unbearable uh, to see this level of irresponsibility in terms of teaching. Because if you talk to many of their leaders, they would say, oh, there's nothing wrong with going to the hospital. There's no, no problem. With that, uh, hey, you know, uh, we don't we don't do that. We don't force people not to go, but the atmosphere did, and they knew that, and they refused to change the atmosphere. They refused to teach anything different than what they've been teaching because they didn't seem to know how to change from take no medication to it's okay to take medication because of this ideal, this lofty ideal that they had 
of divine healing. And so whoever dies on that altar of sacrifice, well, that was their decision. Now, now to me, that is just so irresponsible uh, as a leader. And they're going to have to give an account to God. Uh, like the lady used to say on the show, you don't have to give an account to me, but you will have to give an account to Jesus. So that's how I feel about that. Um, I don't know why to this day they don't change their teaching about divine healing, but they feel somehow this is letting down off of the truth. Let me tell you, God doesn't need you to prove to him anything. There is no way that me not sacrificing my body and my life or me sacrificing my body and life is giving any more glory to God because he's already glorious. So how am I taking any glory away from him by the fact that I didn't take any medication? I, I'm not taking anything. Who can take something away from God? Who? But it was taught like that, like somehow God is going to be disappointed. The saints are going to be disappointed. And you're going to take glory away from God if you take this medication. And unfortunately, very honest, uh, sincere people uh, lost their life when maybe they didn't have to. Um, People have sat there and watched babies pass away, I've heard, um, because they didn't want to take C-sections. I've heard about some of these cases while being in the group. Um, some cases I actually saw with my own eyes of people in incredible pain and suffering. And this was somehow seen as some way to give God glory out of their body. It was very, very sad, um, very troubling. And to this day, I don't think they teach much of anything different. I think people are freer uh, than they were when I first joined the group in taking medications and that kind of thing. However, you still have people um, that refuse to take any medication, uh, refuse to get any help. And many times they, they were like, oops, I'm actually going to die if I don't get this taken care of. They go back to the doctor and the doctor says it's too late. I can't do it medically anything right now. Um, so that is a heady mentality of coercion that's a is really an example of collective coercion where the fear of the group causes you to do something that could mean your life so um it's a really heavy subject today but the three points are that the group has a polarized us versus them mentality uh the leader is not accountable to any authorities, and the group teaches or implies that the ends justify the means. So again, uh, we will go through this characteristics of cultic groups. Um, have a great week, and I'll see you next time.